so we're working, moving on here from uh, surface area to volume. Um, volume of a prism would be the area of the base times the height of the prism. I'll show you where we get that here. Volume, volume of course being the number of little cubes you can fit in something. You have the volume of a box. Everybody knows the following formula. Volume is length times width times height. So if this were, if this were um, six centimeters, this were eight centimeters, and this were ten centimeters, all I would have to do is do eight centimeters times six centimeters times ten centimeters. Multiplying those through, uh, eight times six is 48 times 10 is 480. Centimeters times centimeters times centimeters is cubic centimeters. But, I may say, well, that's not that formula. No problem. We come back here and we look at it. The length and the width right here, that's the base. So, what we really have is the area of the base times the height. And that's where this formula comes from. Wherever the shape of the base is, you find the area of that, you take it times the height of the prism. So even if we have something over here, like a triangle, triangular prism, we're going to find the area of the base, take it times the height of the prism. So right here, that's my base, it's a triangle. So I'm going to do the area of a triangle is 1 half, 7 times 4. That's centimeters. This is centimeters. The area of the base here is going to be 14 square centimeters. And then we we'll take that times the volume, find the volume, take the area of the base times the height. The area of the base is 14 square centimeters. The height of this thing is 15 centimeters. So I get the volume to be 210 <coughs> square centimeters times centimeters to be cubic centimeters. Fight then they have the same volume. What does that mean to us? It means, scoot over. Move, get out of the way. I don't like it anymore. Just kidding. It means, this is volume, right? Let's make up our own units here. How do we call this uh, cubic books? Are you good with that? The volume's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight cubic books. Eight cubic books, okay? So right now the volume is eight cubic books. What's the volume now? It's leaning, it's leaning, it's leaning. What's the volume? Eight cubic books. You mean it didn't, didn't change? Just because it was leaning? No, it doesn't, does it? What if Mr. Kuhn did this? I'm going to make it spin. Oh, what's the volume now? Oh, I can't trick you. Sad. Yeah, eight cubic books. Because, do they have the same cross-sectional area? The cross-section would be this, right? Did the area of this change at all? It's the same, isn't it? Do they have the same height? Did the height change? No, it's the same height. So are they going to have the same volume? That's all it says. That's all it says. So if you were to make something cool, like a shape, like out of clay, and you were to twist it, would the volume change? No, it stays the same. That's Cavalieri's principle. So, with your team, find that volume. In about 20, 30 seconds, go.
All right, Mr. Nally, what's the area of that base going to be? Yep. Yep. It's a circle. I'm going to put a little circle right here. So it's pi 6 squared, which is 36 pi, which is like 113.09 something. But we'll just leave it right there because I like exact answers. So we have to plug it in. Area of the base, 36 pi times the height. Which number do we use here? Mr. O'Neill, which number do we use? Uh, ten. 10, yes. We use the 10. We don't care how much it's slanted. We just want the 10 times 10. And we're going to get 360 pi. What would the units be? Cubic meters. So I know this has been a really tough lesson, okay? Really tough. Length times width times height. Well, just area of the base times height. I know it's tough, it's tough, but I think you can handle this. Yes? Thumbs up, thumbs down, how are you feeling? Easier than the surface area? Yeah, it's easier than the surface area. All right. Uh, that's it, thank you.